All right. We are at 501. And um, Laura, let's start with, um, well, actually, let me let me identify myself first. I'm, I'm City Councilor Bill Dwight. I'm the chair of Legislative Matters. Um, in order to get things rolling, I'm going to ask Laura to call the roll, please, to make sure we have a, have a quorum of the committee. Councilor Dwight. I'm here. Councilor Mayori. Here. Councilor Shera. Here. And Councilor Thorpe. Here. Okay. Thank you. We, we do have a quorum. So just notify everyone who's attending that this meeting will be recorded. As you can tell, it's a remote participation meeting. Um, so your audio and video will be recorded. This is to give you informed consent. Should you not want to be recorded or chronicled in any way, I recommend um, turning off your camera and your microphone and possibly altering any ID issues on your, on your profile. Um, first up, well, why don't we get the minutes out of the way first? I think, and what we'll do as far as public comment goes, we'll just incorporate that as we address the items because public comment is going to be specific to those items. So we'll conduct this similar to the way we might conduct a hearing, but without the formal votes, but um, giving, you know, because we have a few items and there may be folks here who wanna speak specifically to those and ask questions specific to those. So that's what I think would probably serve us best. So first up, I'll accept the motion relative to the minutes of um, the, our joint hearing from uh, March 8th on 2021. Uh, motion was made by Councillor Shara, seconded by Councillor Thorpe. Is that right? That's fine. I just heard I just heard a combination of noises. That was it. That's it. Is everyone okay with that? Okay. Uh, any discussion on the minutes, changes, alterations, additions? No? Uh, Laura, would you please call the roll on an acceptance of, of those minutes? Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Mayori? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. And Councillor Thorpe? Yes. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay. So, the item, why don't we take the items in order as they're presented? We have in attendance with us uh, Councillor Jarrett from Ward 5 representing Ward 5, where every single one of these is located. I believe every order here is a uh, proposed order is in, in fact roughly the same neighborhood off Pine Street and Nonatuck. So, um, so we'll start with, well, actually, you know what? I would like to recognize Councillor Jarrett. Um, so that he, because this is actually part of a system, it is it's a, to address holistically some issues that have been that have uh, been identified in in Florence, and and maybe Alex, if you'd be comfortable enough to just give us uh, an overview of your understanding of what's being proposed. Sure. Do you want there? So there are two separate areas uh, involved. There's the Pine, Maple, and Man uh, intersection, and then there's Scanlon and Bliss uh, and uh, Cross and, and Florence Road. Uh, did you? Which one did you want to start with? Well, um, I do understand. What I was suggesting was I understand that it's actually because they all lead into each other and they all actually kind of inform. Um, traffic flow. I mean, every you know, the smaller ones probably some of them are self explanatory, some of them are um, coming on to Florence Road. I mean, you're actually putting a stop sign there, seems to me somewhat redundant, but it's because you have to stop, you basically have to stop if you're coming up, up that steep hill and then you can't just go whipping into traffic. but. There are war well, why don't we talk about the big ones? Let's yeah, before, if you can describe, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say before we jump in, there was a request for public comment. So can you just reiterate how public comment will be handled? Sure, I'm sorry. Um, we're gonna do public comment as the items come up. So if there's something you wanna speak to specifically in that, this is more open discussion so that you won't be 
limited by your time or your questions because what we're trying to do is suss out here's the things that work out best for everybody. So, um, so Alex, actually first, why don't you address the uh, four-way stop proposal? Sure. Um, so I spoke, uh, I'll, I'll just read the statement that I got from uh, Donna Lascalia, the DPW director who unfortunately wasn't able to make it uh, today. Um, and so, the, they hired the engineering for, firm Fuss and O'Neill to review this intersection. Um, the one of the reasons that they're that this is being redone now is that um, Pine Street will be repaved uh, in this coming construction season. So it makes sense to try to do all this work uh, at once. So the she she writes, Fuss and O'Neill reviewed this intersection, which has a very high crash rate. Uh, I believe it's four times the uh, normal crash rate for an unsignalized intersection um, uh, and offered the four way stop as a preferred alternative. The current configuration is definitively not working. Traffic control devices, including stop signs, yield signs and traffic lights are frequently installed on hills, especially in this part of the country when intersecting streets and traffic volumes hit warrants. While we acknowledge that in the Northeast, no road is ever snow and ice free, doing nothing is not an option here, and traffic has to be controlled in all four directions. From an operations standpoint, we have sanding routes that are dedicated specifically to hilly locations slash intersections, and this area is already one that we monitor. These sanding routes are the first to be mobilized in bad weather and the last to be demobilized. So that's, that's the quote from the director. Um, I would say that the, the, so the issue is that most of the crashes happen where um, someone is traveling on to, traveling on Maple Street and then um, Pine Street, someone on Pine Street pulls out and uh, they are hit uh, by someone traveling uh, at a, you know, a fair rate of speed. And um, I've certainly heard a number of concerns from my constituents uh, regarding mainly regarding the the concern that in the winter people coming up Maple Street uh, traveling north um, will uh, have to stop at the top there and be on an incline and be unable to start again and when there's multiple vehicles that that would become uh, an especial concern and I agree that that is a concern um, I'm sure that there will be I issues there um, I believe what the director and what uh, Fuss and O'Neill are are advocating for is that essentially the current situation results in accidents that happen at uh, higher speeds. And although there may, may be some concerns around people traveling uh, up that hill and having trouble with that, that, that the four-way stop proposal will create um, a situation where everyone comes to a stop or a near stop and any crashes that then happen would be at a low speed and unlikely to, uh, to result in serious uh, uh, injury or um, uh, what's the word? Serious, uh, high cost, high collision uh, <clears throat> costs. Um, so that is, the, that's the overview of the four-way stop. Um, in addition, the proposal is that man terrace, uh, which currently comes in at a 45 degree angle to that intersection um, become a one-way street just for the very end of it, where it hit before it hits Pine Street, um, so that and that it would be a right turn only. And the reason for that is because, um, as you know, your people are coming off of Man Terrace to limit the number of possible um, collision or like air, no, what's the traffic conflict points. So if you if you come to a come to a stop there and have to turn right, there's no there's there's not an ability to do, to turn left there, which could result in people coming down Maple Street encountering a situation that they're thinking, oh, no one is actually uh, that that would be an unusual thing for someone to to come in at that angle, um, and they wouldn't necessarily be looking for that. So the only conflict is someone who's turning right, someone could be coming off of Maple, say, and um, <clears throat> turning onto Pine, and but that, that would be much more expected. So that's, that's the basic um, 
the, the basic idea as far as those the, the reasoning behind those points. Thank you. Um, we, we have now to update everyone, we are skipping around a little bit. Actually, the item that we're talking about is um, I mean, it's like the fourth item on our agenda, but the, in so far as this one involves Manteras one way, uh, the brief one way period and also a four way stop and also seems to one that generates the most questions. I thought we would address that first. Also, I would suspect but don't know um, that the Pine Street parking um, changes are also somewhat related to this proposal. The four way stop, am I wrong? Um, yeah, so based, the items I was just talking about are D, E, and F. Um, and the Pine Street parking is a, a different section of Pine Street than this area. So it's it's not directly related. And I think we it's need down. to take that uh, separately. Okay. Well, why don't I, why don't, first, I'm going to introduce those three items as we just described that the Councilor Jarrett was kind enough to describe. And then we'll vote to put them on the floor for discussion. Is everyone okay with that? Okay, so that's item 21214. That's an ordinance relative to stop signs on Maple Street, Man Terrace, and Pine Street. Um, and then item 21.215, an ordinance relative to uh, turning restriction on Man Terrace, referred by the City Council on April 1st. And that's true of all of these. And that's 21. Uh, Point two one six, and that's an ordinance relative to one way street on Man Terrace. And um, I could read you the items for the most part. They're not very <laughs> illustrative or uh, illuminating, but they essentially all they do is they they essentially describe um, in in this case on Pine Street. Let's see. Hang on a second. Um, well, you know what? I am going to read it anyway, just because, by God, that's that's what we're supposed to do. So, um, so on twenty one two one four, that's an ordinance, as I said, relative to stop signs on Maple Street, Man Terrace, and Pine Street. Um, so under uh, Section three twelve dash one thirteen of the Code of Ordinances, it should is being proposed that would be amended as follows: that three twelve dash one 13 schedule uh, 12 stop and yield intersections a isolated stop signs stops uh, intersections are established at the following location and um, we are striking pine street east at the intersection of maple that's being struck and then pine street west the intersection of maple and adding man terrace north uh, and pine street and then the multi-way stop signs, uh, multi-way stop intersections are established at the following locations, Pine Street East and West on May and with the intersection of Maple, and then Maple Street North South at the intersection of Pine Street. And as you can plainly tell, those of you following along at home, that didn't clear up anything for you, I'm pretty sure, but uh, uh, Councilor Jarrett. So I just emailed Laura a link to a um, map. Uh, oh, good. Uh, that oh, good. That'll help. To Transportation and Parking Commission. That'll help. Okay. Are you able to call it up, Laura? I'm getting it. Yes. One second. These were maps that the TPC had? It's yeah. just like a letter, but hopefully. Oh, that's too bad they didn't, they weren't attached to our orders. Right. Page two. Help. Okay. One second. Okay. Oh. There we go. Now, now, does everyone know where we are here on this? This is uh, okay. the intersection of Maple and Pine Street in Florence. And you can see Man Terrace. So this would, if you were going up Maple Street towards Florence Center, this is the, that's the orientation you have here. Um, the bottom part of the map would be coming up from uh, Nonatuck. And you'll see Man Terrace, which Councillor Jarrett has just described there on the right in gray, um, turning that where currently outlets into that intersection um, will be converted to a um, 
turn off there that only allows a right hand turn out of that. Um, Council Jarrett, do you know, are there any land takings associated with this? I don't believe there are. It's, it's all okay. um, on city all, property already. Okay, all right. All right. Um, so uh, questions from the council, questions from citizens, questions from anybody who is curious about this discussion. Yes, Emma. Can, is Emma Hi, on mute? Um, there you go. Yes. First of all, thanks to all of you for your service to the city. Um, I live, I'm Emma Linderman. I live in on Riverside Drive in Bay State. And I often take um, maple up that, Hill. So I'm one of the people who has expressed concern about stopping um, that can be at times, I take it at all different times of the day. And there are times when there's a fair amount of traffic that goes up that hill. And it's a short section. Um, so I have had concerns both um, in terms of winter driving and in general about stopping because um, that stop will be before that hill actually crests. Um, I, I will say, I appreciate um, uh, Councillor Jarrett being here because I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to get here um, for this meeting, but um, I am pleased to hear that it's considered a standing route and would be mobilized first and last in bad weather. Um, but I'll just say that from, I usually take it up that hill less often down. I did notice that the speed limit on Maple is listed at, as 30 miles an hour. And I'm surprised that that is that fast if that's been a concern um, about accidents um, and surprised that it's not less. So I do have concerns about the stopping on the hill, um, but, I assume it's going to happen anyway. Um, so, uh, oh, did you meet? You're muted again. All of a sudden, Emma. Yeah. So, thank you for listening. Um. So, uh, Dennis, you got something you you want to share? <laughs> go ahead. Is sure. Go. Uh, thanks, Bill. Um, you know, I, I, I have a part-time gig where I drive a, a delivery van uh, a couple of days a week all around the area. And I know virtually every intersection in and around North, Northampton. Um, I can't stand four-way stop signs. They, they don't work. Um, they're primarily designed for people who don't know how to drive and they create more problems than they solve. Uh, some of those problems include people who don't know or observe the order of occurrence that determines who gets to go next. Um, some people unnecessarily hesitate when it's their turn, um, leads to frustration and possibly dangerous driving by others who want to proceed when it is their turn. Some drivers go before it's their turn, which risks a, a collision with people who are correctly observing the proper order. And then there's the unobservant drivers who think that every four-way intersection has a four-way stop sign. Most don't. And I know this from driving around the, the, the area time and again, when I've got the right of way and there's got a stop sign coming the other way, people are pulling out in front of me because they think it's a four-way stop sign. They get it into that habit that it's a four-way stop sign. Um, it's that, that yeah, and, and that's a, a danger we're unable to measure because putting an, another four-way stop sign here is going to lead to more danger elsewhere where people are, are pulling out of stop signs where they shouldn't. Now, we, we heard that there, you know, there's two kinds of collisions that happen there, people who just run the stop sign and putting in a, a, a four-way stop is not, is not going to slow them down uh, and, and, and people who pull out in into traffic from the stop sign when they shouldn't. Now, I know we hired a consultant firm and this was their recommendation. I didn't hear about other recommendations, such as other intersections that I've seen where they have stop signs on both sides of the road, 
sometimes surrounded with red lights, whether blinking or not. But believe me, those kinds of stop signs are very visible from a distance. You, you know that there's a stop sign coming. I heard no discussion about trying something like that or a blinking red light over, overhead like, like, like we have in, in, um, in some other uh, places. But it, I, I just, I, I don't want to go down the road of just jumping on a four-way stop sign as a solution when, you know, it, it, it's probably going to create more problems than it solves. Some of them we're not even able to measure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else have any other thoughts on this? Uh, first, Councilor Thorpe, did you did you have? I did. I just have a, uh, a question for uh, Councilor Jared. Councilor Jared, do you know if the um, discussion, any discussion around the speed limit, was brought up in this area? Um, we did dis discuss the speed limit on Pine Street and Maple Street. Um, or no, did we just discussed it on Pine Street? Um, but but both Pine and Maple. Uh, I believe are those speed limits are set by the state um, and that those would require uh, a, a, spe a speed study in order to, to change those. Um, but uh, I will say as far as speed limits go, uh, changing a speed limit does not usually change the speed at which people drive uh, unless accompanied by um, a lot of enforcement or a, a reconfiguration of the roadway um, to to narrow it or to create conditions where people are more likely to 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 drive at a slower speed. Thank you, Councillor Jarrett. Um, Dennis, I'm sorry, I forgot that in in. Emma did it correctly, but I forgot to notify everyone that if you could identify yourself and your and your city of residence, sure. I know who you are. But... And I live on 50 Middle Street in Florence. Thank you. Um, Councilor Jarrett. Um, I, I can also speak to, uh, so I have the engineering report that Hassan O'Neill did um, for this intersection and a number of others around the city. I'd be happy to send that to anyone uh, who is interested. Um, but they did consider um, also a roundabout at that location, but um, it's, that would be quite expensive, but it would also, it would meet the uh, necessary, um, the warrants, I guess is the question. Um, and, but their rationalization for the multi-way stop control, um, they also spoke quite a bit about the site distances, which are not met for vehicles that are stopped on Pine Street. Um, and so even, uh, even though this is not necessarily, a, a, I mean, I'm sure there are some people who are just not stopping, but even those who are stopping um, because of those site distance concerns, uh, this is one of the reasons that uh, adding for, for a multi-way stop control. Um, they, they considered also a switch to a two-way stop control on Maple Street with free movement on Pine Street, um, but that, that doesn't solve the intersection site visibility uh, that, that as you're coming up Maple Street. Um, so uh, those are some of those, their, their reasoning uh, for, for the, the changes. True, the sight lines there, particularly if you're driving um, on Pine Street, that on the left-hand side, Maple Street is hard to determine. As as Emmett pointed out, it's a steep climb, so it's difficult. You don't see the cars coming right away. You don't see them as they approach, and they in turn don't see you. That's one of the bigger problems that's addressed there. Now the Discussion about four-way stops. Now, it's interesting, historically, <laughs> Northampton, Northampton is one of the last communities in the state, and Massachusetts is one of the last states to employ four-way stop systems. Um, uh, they're advanced not as an ideal form. Actually, the roundabouts tend to be uh, far more effective and also uh, you know, reduce carbon output, and among other things. But they're also enormously expensive in investment. And what, but the benefit of a four-way stop is actually not 
unlike what Dennis described, it is that confusion, that hesitancy, that uh, that actually causes people, causes drivers, even though they don't know clearly something about Northampton or something about Massachusetts, people really don't know how to how to negotiate a four way stop. They don't know who has who has the right away, who goes next. There you have those who will go because they're better than the rest of us. Then there are those who understand that you you defer to the person on the right if you all arrive at the intersection at the same time. It's all in driver's ed, but many of us are way past our driver's ed manuals and probably not likely to refresh ourselves very often. But there is that annoying hesitancy. And I think my big the biggest concerns that usually happen at four-way intersections is annoyance um, and, and frustration. But the fact remains is that it does it has the effect of reducing impacts and 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 high speed impacts in particular. So as I said, I said they're not ideal recommendations, and they are particularly problematic. Particularly as I said, in this, you know, in California, everything's built on a grid system, so they can do four way stops, and every alternating street is a four way stop. Not so, as you can see, Man Terrace is a perfect example. This is. Um, a wise goat once upon a time designed this road system and there and we paved it and then we're at, we have to address it so um elizabeth i'm sorry you just you had your hand up did um so am i only going to be able to talk once or can i come in later no no this is okay. this is more free form yeah. uh, that's good you know I, I like free form because i actually have something that applies to all of this for later but um what i wanted to say with respect to that that intersection is that Part of the big problem in my mind is the left turn from Pine onto Maple heading towards Nonatuck. There is a big, <clears throat> big, huge, clunky green Columbia gas thing. I don't know exactly what it is. Um, it is right by a tree that is also limiting some of the site, but the biggest problem is that green thing. So if that could be moved back or somewhere completely else, I think that left turn issue would be eradicated. Um, so thank you, Dennis. I, the Boston accent just makes my heart gefell. I really appreciated hearing that from you. But um, I lived, I should just add, I lived in Missouri for seven years and they have a lot of four-way stop signs. And um, I hear your frustration about that bill because that, that really, as a Boston driver sitting at a stop sign for ev where everybody was saying, no, you go, no, you go, no, you go. Um, it was incredibly frustrating, but I don't know how bad the accidents were. One of the report didn't say, they said it was a lot of accidents. It didn't say how many, it didn't say how, I mean, it said how, it, I think it said how many, it didn't say how bad. So, you know, I just, I, I don't know which direction they were in or any of that. And it seems to me that information would be useful, but you're gonna use your, your, your good judgment in making this decision. So I'm happy to go with that. But I do, I'm coming back later for Cross and Scanlon. Oh, okay. And, and so, so, and we look forward to that. Um, and as you know, actually, and I think also historically should be understood, and I think everyone here understands it, that, um, that particular use of Maple Street at that lower point, lower Maple Street there, became more intense when the, the rather originally radical speed humps were deployed on Nonatuck Street. So people trying to avoid Nonatuck um, and Maple's your first outlet before you hit one of those speed humps. And so the traffic has increased there consequently um, for people trying to avoid that, among other things. So, you, and as we've said, and I think Dennis alluded to this, for every, every, everything that, every modification and change we do impacts something somewhere else and creates, uh, you know, people driving in cars very much like water flowing. And then when you, you people will keep driving and it's how, you know, if we stop them from driving or discourage them from driving somewhere else, they'll go somewhere else. And then we'll have to deal with that intersection when the time comes. Um, but the, it, it, as far as the warrants, there is, I understand at least just back in the day, it was, there were three criteria, three types of warrants, uh, speed, volume, and accidents. Um, and uh, as Councilor Jared has pointed out, this intersection has met those warrants 
that um, it's a pretty high threshold to get to the point where you start recommending either a roundabout or a four-way stop or signalization. Uh, signalization is is probably the least effective ultimately in these things, at least as I understand in um, highway traffic studies, uh, particularly in neighborhoods like this. But um, you know the the problem that M I identified would not be would not change a jot. You'd still have you'd still have a stop a stoplight, and you'd have to stop at the top of that intersection. Uh, education is another important format when you when you employ these devices. It requires a fair amount of education. Our first four way stop was the one on Ryan and Florence Road. Um, there wasn't a, enough education to start with. You had people been driving for generations down that road without realizing they suddenly had to stop on Florence Road. And there, we had multiple accidents um, shortly after we introduced it. And as I said, it was our first, actually, our first four way stop was at Hatfield. Um, but so, it, it does require, it requires education after installation, among other things. So to, to, to warn the citizens that this is pending. To Emma's concern, I think that, um, I honestly think regardless of whatever is decided, whatever, whatever device is employed, if it's not four-way stops, you, the problem that you described still exists. Um, treatment of that road, even, even if you don't have to stop, you still have to go slowly up that hill. And you're right. If, if another car is coming down Pine Street, you will have to stop. You're not going to, you're not going to take on that car, and you're still stuck with the same problem that you have, which is backsliding. Which is why, I believe that Director Lascalia had said this: this that portion of Maple Street has always been identified as a priority on uh, for salting, um, treating, and plowing during storms. Um. I've gone on long enough. Is there anyone else have any questions about this? Um, of course, no. I, I've done this. <laughs> I've done this in in a a really quaint little way. But the fact is, is that it would require us because the motion is on the floor. It would require us to vote on it at this point. Um, and Councilor Shara, did we didn't we put this on the floor? You're muted. You're still muted. I know. I know. <laughs> Did we put two things on the floor? I'm no, actually, we only put. I'm actually not seeing a motion on the floor after we introduced two. Oh, good. All right. Good. Together. There was a motion okay. prior to that. But, um, okay. Okay. And I just read those. I read those items. Well, okay. Well, let, let's. Um, are there any questions actually relative to the man terrace modifications as being described? So essentially not allowing entry to man terrace um, from Nana Tuck Street at that point. Is that correct? Councilor Jarrett? Yeah. Uh, from Pine Street. Right. You and you've have you talked with um, the people, the folks who live on Man Terrace? about this or you've heard from anyone there? Yeah, um, I alerted, uh, uh, and actually everyone received a uh, letter along with the map that we saw um, from the DPW. They fired the neighborhood. And um, there was at the Transportation Parking Commission meeting, there, there was attendance from people um, um, in, the, in that neighborhood. So I, I think everyone's been informed and had the opportunity to to um, weigh in, and I haven't heard any serious concerns around specifically the the one way segment of main of Man Terrace and the right turn only restriction. Okay. Council Shara. So Man Terrace now one way would just want to Beacon, is that right, or is the other direction? Yes. So the, the only, only entrance would be on from Beacon, but oh, the only okay. So the, the, way it's only going... one way for that portion. Okay. Um, cause so were the folks on beacon near there also given notice? Will that affect their traffic flow? Um, I'm, I believe I, I'm not sure the exact extent of 
um, where the flyering was done. It was the entire length of Man Terrace. I would hope that it was also a, at least a section of Beacon because it does mean that, that no one will be able to enter from Pine Street. So there are, you know, in, in terms of, um, there could be additional tra traffic. All the entering traffic does have to come off of Beacon. Um, I emailed everyone in my contact list within a much broader range. Mm -hmm. So I, I do hope that, that everyone had the opportunity. Um, ba -dum -dum -dum. So that's that addresses the turning restriction and the stop sign on Man Terrace. Um, so uh, just to be clear, we have not heard any expressed opposition to that to date. Uh, Elizabeth. No, the one thing I did want to say about the one way is that I did talk to Larry Hot, and he said he, he thought it was a really good idea to do the one way. And his rationale was, you've got to be crazy to take a left from Man onto Pine. So, well, that, that doesn't rule out a lot of drivers. So, I, I just just to be clear, and, and by the way, Elizabeth, I didn't have you identify yourself either. I'm just sorry, Elizabeth Silver, uh, Florence. Thank you. Um, any other conversation, uh, discussion on this? on these three items. I'd accept a motion for a referral on these three items. Uh, move a positive resolution. And, and, and Councilor Thorpe, did you second that? I did. Okay, all right. Uh, further discussion on these items. Laura, please call the roll. Councilor Mayori. Yes. Okay. Um, Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. And Councillor Dwight. Yes. So just to be clear, those three items that we just described, and I, I know this doesn't make Dennis very happy, but they, they have been forwarded to the to the council with a positive recommendation. There will be an opportunity at the council at the next council meeting where these will be on the agenda for you to um, to to make your case also before the, the the members of that body which includes us as well but um let's scroll back to the top uh we'll go to 21 198 this is an ordinance relative to a stop sign on scanlon avenue um and let's just leave it at that it's scanlon avenue oh you're leaving Dennis? okay uh scanlon avenue um i don't know if we have a map but that's merges onto florence road off of bliss street it's a it's a one block road. It also has a very steep hill as it as it approaches uh, Florence Road. Um, it's in between two, and, and that point, its intersection is in between two speed bumps, uh, speed humps. Um, and the proposal is to put a stop sign there. Am I wrong, Councilor Jarrett? Yes, Councilor Jarrett. Uh, I think you're thinking of Cross Street, Scanlon Avenue. I'm is, is I'm sorry, uh, right. the next block. Thank you. Actually, would you? Why don't we talk about these two? Because they're, and I suspect that's what Elizabeth wants to speak to about as well. So, can you talk about those two stop sign proposals? Sure. So, uh, any T intersection is a a implied stop sign. Everyone is required to stop at those intersections already. Um, so there's you know, there's. On Cross Street, uh, since that's a two-way street, uh, there's a proposed stop sign at the intersection with Bliss and with Florence Road. And then on Scanlon, which is a one-way street, there's only a stop sign um, at, at the Florence Road intersection proposed. And the reasoning for putting these here is because there are certain warrants that have to be met in order to have a posted stop sign at a T intersection. Traffic volume is one of them. So on both of the Florence Road uh, intersections uh, that is met by traffic volume. Um, and on Bliss Street, um, traffic volume is not uh, met there, but um, sight lines are. Now there's currently a hedge uh, that does not meet the zoning code that um, I am assured by the DPW director will be taken care of, although it has been a while. 
Um, and um, there have been many complaints, so I'm not sure why that is not uh, taken care of yet. Um, but even when that is brought down to the appropriate level, which is uh, three feet of height uh, within 25 feet of the intersection, um, there is, will still be a mailbox, a uh, post box for outgoing mail, and there will be a pole, electric telephone pole. Um, that, and because of those two things, um, the warrants are met for sightline issues. So that is the reasoning uh, that the DPW director gave for putting stop signs here. Questions, comments? Um, okay. Um, I, I, you, oh, Elizabeth, go ahead. Well, I don't know if this is the right time. Um, it's a, it's kind of a more general thing, but um, yeah, I, I hope those hedges come down. I think they're a problem. Um, and I, and I want to say that you know what you said about stopping at the crest of Scanlon or Cross. It's like if you don't stop there, you're crazy. But um, if, if you guys want to do the stop sign, so be it. So I just wanted to read you a little levity into this meeting. Um, I wrote this for you all because I know most of you. Um, Laura, I don't know you, but it's nice to meet you. It's called Ode to a Stop Sign. It's big and red and has eight sides. In the right spot, it should save lives. Standing proud from street to street, easing traffic on the beat. A delicate balance, it then should be. Placement matters, that's easy to see. Too many in town, we come to a halt. Traffic stops, horns honk, not my fault. But if they help skirt many crashes of crazy motorists making mad dashes, then they make sense and could do good. Just want to make sure that where they stood is critical to the safety of the hood. Cross and Scanlon are little streets. So is where maple, man, and pine meet. A clunky green thing, gas company gear, stands in the way of seeing clear. But if you're certain these places are needy and too many drivers are going too sleepy, if you're convinced and have no doubt, for sure, put them up where they'll help us out. I, I, you know, I've come to really cherish our times. I mean, uh, Councilor <laughs> Jarrett had performed for us on his inaugural. Uh, I, he performed a little song. We've had we've had poetry. We've had I just I working for this city is has its rewards. It should be noted. Thank you for that. Um, and just so you know, that's now committed to the public record, so you have to look at that. So, <laughs> um, get my identification on that read. All right, yeah. I, I'm gonna trust you to your devices. I need to leave and get ready for another meeting, but uh, okay, okay. thank you, Elizabeth. I really I thoroughly enjoyed that. I've been thoroughly enjoying this meeting. Thank you all, <laughs> appreciate your thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth. Um yeah, it's true. I mean, in, in, in fact, actually, um, you know, I am getting to be like the old gray beard. Northampton, once upon a time, stop signs were a patronage thing. People would come to a, some councillors who were more accommodating. Uh, the councillor who used to represent uh, Council Maori's ward once upon a time. Um, if someone wanted a stop sign, he'd have it put there. It didn't matter if it was a dead end street and there was no main traffic, it didn't matter. There were no warrant issues. And consequently, Northampton has still some, uh, you know, anachronistic stop signs throughout the town, throughout the city um, that really have no business being there. And part of the concern that was expressed at the time by DPW Director George Andrew Keyes was, he, always, he very much resisted the putting up of signs, he said, and he was actually very telling. In one meeting, he came up to us and said, I can tell you, I know for a fact that all of you driving to this meeting passed no less than 30 signs in the course of your time getting here, depending on where you came from. Can you tell me two of them? And that was pretty striking. He was saying, no, I couldn't tell you two of them. The fact is, is that stop signs actually do, I mean, they're the most elemental form of traffic uh, or the most obvious one of, of traffic mitigation. And in this case, you know, I, I, I mentioned this to Alex before, I think, you know, as Alex alluded to, is that you're required to stop 
at a T intersection. That's the law. It's as if there were a stop sign there. You have to behave that way. But again, as I said, who reads driver's manuals anymore? Who even knows those rules? And the fact is, is you don't necessarily want to rely on the fact that someone's really up to speed on that, no pun intended. And I, and in this respect, I don't think these are superfluous or excessive stop signs. It, it just reinforces what we should actually all be doing anyway. And that problematic intersection with the hedges, that oddly enough, the hedges still, requ they require you to creep out really, really slowly. Although not everyone does that, but it is, it's, it is, those hedges clearly are a violation. There's been a standing violation, as Councilor Jarrett pointed out, for a long time and probably responsible for a number of fender vendors. But I, I, I agree. If, the, if those hedges are addressed and the stop signs in place, I, I feel a little better about that. Councilor Miori, I'm sorry. Oh, no, not at all. I was just going to say, um, you know, it, it actually is kind of proving Dennis right in the sense that when I use that intersection, Everyone acts like it's a four-way four stop anyway. So in a way, having a four-way stop, I don't think it's going to actually increase the problems because at least it's clear it's supposed to be a four-way stop. Um, so yeah, I think he made his own point in that it's already treated that way. <laughs> but he's not here to, to answer to that, so I'll leave, I'll leave it at that. He did pop up for a second there, though, but I saw him. But, um, all right. So actually, by accident, we've we've uh, we've mentioned both uh, yeah. the stop signs at Cross and at uh, Scanlon. So I would accept the recommendation on those two items. Move to recommend. Both council. Okay, and that's twenty one one ninety eight and twenty one one ninety nine uh, relative stop signs on Cross and Scanlon Avenue. Um. Further discussion on these items. Uh, was there a second? I'm sorry. No what? Yes. Councilor Thorpe. Councilor Thorpe. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Roll call for a positive recommendation of the council on the two stop signs. Oh, Laura, you're muted. Yes. You can read your lips. Yes. That's very good. <laughs> Councilor Thorpe. Yes. Um, Councilor Dwight. Yes. And Councillor Mayori. Yes. Okay, that leaves us one left to go, and that's 21213. That's an ordinance relative to parking on Pine Street. And um, before I take a motion on this, uh, Councillor Jarrett, if you could share with us the, this, I'm, I'm guessing this is down uh, towards the other end of Pine Street. Yes, I actually sent Laura another map that was from okay. T and D. Pull that up. Okay. Uh, wait. Now I see the Maple Street, Pine Street one. Is, did you send me another? Maybe I need to refresh. Um, um, yeah. Here, I'll just drop it in the um, chat to you. Oh, I see. You know what? I, I'm seeing it now. Wait a minute. Okay. By the way, the voice to text trans transmission thing is identifying man terrorists as man terrorists. Uh, did you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All That's right, Council name. Jarrett. <laughs> Council okay. Jarrett, why don't you break this down so for us? Here we are on, on Pine Street um, <coughs> near the intersection with South Main Street, the section between Chestnut and South Main. And presently, uh, we have a parking prohibited at all times where you see in red, and um, no parking restriction where you see in uh, orangish yellow. <laughs> and um, so if Laura, you would scroll down, you can see the proposal is to make no parking entirely on um, the side uh, um, that currently has no parking on um, part of it. And the reason for this has to do with the width of Pine Street and, and the, uh, the volume of traffic that goes through and that if there's parking on both sides, um, then there isn't sufficient uh, room 
for uh, traffic to, to flow through uh, even, I mean, if someone happened to park directly, it would be a very narrow, uh, like directly across from each other. Um, so, you know, I, I that the DPW director spoke to this and um, as, as a safety issue, um, there are other opinions that uh, having a lot of cars parked uh, causes people to slow down and, and not, and um, take take things uh, into what's a condition called yield flow, which would still happens on this street where there's, or cur courtesy one-way traffic is another uh, way of talking about it, where, um, you know, someone has to stop and wait for the next person uh, to pass um, in order to get through when there's people parked. Um, so someone consider having, a mo the more cars you can park there, the the safer it might be, but uh, from a traffic flow perspective, um, that may not be the case. So, you know, it can restrict traffic flow. Um, and so we still still have parking entirely on one other side. And um, that can certainly set up uh, plenty of yield flow conditions uh, with slow traffic. Uh, if the residents wish, there's a long history of this section of street uh, where residents actually purposefully would park uh, on the entire length um, in order to uh, reduced uh, speeding, and then there were, uh, you know, windows smashed by people who didn't like that. So there, there is, there is a, a long history which I'm not fully familiar with, uh, with the street. But I hope that explains some of the background for the, the reasoning. That does. It's very helpful. And I, if you were going to say it, I was going to say it. Yes. But that's true. That uh, the neighborhood in that particular section took it upon themselves to employ their own. Uh, traffic management and um, it, it certainly did create many points of conflict. Um, so, you know, I actually, the problem that you describe is just as it, it just so it does, if there are cars parked on both sides of the road, particularly in the winter, it's, it's very difficult to navigate. Um, and does create its its own issues. So, um, I would imagine that you, Council Jared, have heard from the residents there. Although there's been fair turnover, but the the residents there probably, I would imagine, they weren't especially excited at the prospect of a limit. Not the least of which is eliminating their parking uh, on uh, proximate to their homes. Have you heard anything from them, Matt? Um, I have. They spoke at the transportation and parking me meeting where this was discussed. Um, there's still a significant uh, um, length of space. Um, I, I specific, there, you can see here, uh, uh, well, the image isn't up anymore, but there's really just one house um, that where the parking restriction would change, and that's 7 Pine Street. Uh, every, uh, the other houses on that side of Pine Street um, already have a parking restriction there. And I, so I spoke to that resident who, who did not have a concern about it. Um, he, there's usually plenty of space to park across the street if someone needs to park on the street. Um, however, uh, he and uh, others on that street are certainly concerned about people speeding um, or uh, it's not that actually people speed that much because because they did a traffic uh, study, although I think another one has just been done, which I have not seen the results of a more recent one in response to some of this. Um, but it's the, you know, this has a 30 mile an hour speed limit. Um, and, um, so people tend not to be going faster. Uh, they look at the 85th percentile, uh, uh, you know, how many people at the 85th percentile and, and the 85th percentile is right around 30 miles an hour. So certainly there are some outliers that go faster than 30. Um, but the, uh, the, I think concern is that, you know, 30 miles an hour is fairly fast for a, a street of this width. Um, and so the, they would love for that to be looked at. And they, they have been advocating for traffic calming measures for many years and, and not seen uh, that happen. So they, they, have, they do have a lot of concerns, but they're not directly 
perhaps related to this particular parking change. Uh, Council Mayor. Uh, Council Chair, so are there a lot of um, renters who don't have access to driveways in the area or do you have to know how many residents actually have to park on the street at night? Yeah, I did not hear that concern. Um, I uh, believe that it generally in Florence, as, as you know, we don't have any access to um, a lot to park in that is not that, that it's permissible between midnight and 6 a.m. unlike folks downtown um, we don't have access to that and so I think that off street parking is, is pretty much a, a requirement of for for renters here um, for all for all residents uh, I haven't heard that concern here like like we do um, in areas closer to downtown thank you the, the properties that abut this are principally houses and some are rentals, but the fact is that they're not multiple rentals. And it's interesting, the ebb and flow of the concerns depend on how young a family is. Um, and there has been turnover in that neighborhood. So 15, 20 years ago, people like Bill Childs, for instance, used to live there and he was very concerned about that. And the people who lived across the street, all their children are grown now or they've moved away. Everyone's moved away. And now you have new folks there with more, with some with kids and some without. And I suspect that that informs many of the concerns relative, to, particularly relative to speed there. And it is, it is, it is a, a, a rapid narrowing of Pine Street, uh, which is actually fairly wide until you suddenly get to the church and then it really starts to narrow down and things get anxious making. There was also the parking pressures, the famous parking pressures, Middle Street, of course, that Council Chair still, I'm sure, has to deal with on some level, but the, the, the medical building um, that's there also contributes during the daytime to parking pressures. It is, I mean, this is, this is, these will be ongoing conversations. I, for one, actually do think this is a good idea. I've always thought it was a good idea, but the fact remains that, I mean, never felt my life was in jeopardy as I was driving down there or I had to make the, the uh, I had to stop to uh, allow someone else to pass. But it does create, as I said, the same thing with the four-way stops, it creates this level of frustration. Um, uh, we haven't had road rage incidents there, but it certainly is can be the genesis of some of that. So, um, and plus, I would imagine it would make it easier for the DPW to maintain, particularly in the winter for plowing. Um, it, it becomes really problematic if no one's uh, obeying the trap, the parking bans, and you basically can't plow that street. So, any further question, uh, Councilor Jared? Yeah, um, I will say that I think that the DPW director heard many of these concerns. And given that Pine Street will be entirely repaved, um, that they are looking at traffic calming and uh, other considerations um, in that process. But though, though I haven't heard the results of that. That's encouraging, okay. Um, I'll accept a motion to put this on the floor for uh, recommendation. Councilor Shara is muted, there you go. My kids are so loud. Move a positive recommendation. The second and Councilor Thorpe seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Laura, would you please do the honors? Mm -hmm. Councilor Thorpe. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Mayori. Yes. And Councilor Shara. Yes. All right. That moves forward with a positive recommendation to the council. Uh, and I believe that's every damn item. Sure. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, even though we skipped all over. Councilor Jarrett. Um, I just, do we have an idea of when these will be at the council? Can it make it for this Thursday or will it be the May 6th meeting? I was gonna put them on for Thursday, add okay. them to the agenda for the final. And does anyone, um, the DVW director might be able to come, but do, do we 
how, how do we usually make decisions about that whether well that's the if if you would like the um dpw director to come then the uh, formal request to the mayor's office would be the appropriate way to do that okay. it's also noted that well the transportation parking members will be there as well uh, we didn't have right. a council NAF at this point so uh, the all the weight fell on your shoulders but i thought you did a remarkable job and i'm really glad that you did show up because we would we would have been foundering here so but yeah so that and if you want to let the residents know i suspect we'll see dennis <laughs> and um, and maybe Elizabeth will repeat her poem for us if we're with, with any luck. So, thank you. Um, no new business uh, that leaves us with one other item left to go. Um, that would move to adjourn. Second. Motions made by Council Shara, seconded by Council Miori. Uh, all uh, uh, mm -hmm. Laura, please call the roll on that. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes.